And if they're in a group or not, you are able to rotate and scale them. Now you could use the regular rotation and scaling tools that you get with the main select with the regular selection tool. And I can hold shift to keep proportions if I'm scaling or again to keep 45 degree angles when I'm rotating. You may however want to use the dedicated rotate tool R or scale tool S. So if I use rotate, the bounding box disappears and I get this, the center point of the rotation. Now you don't need to click on it. You can simply click and drag anywhere you like and you will drag in relation to that center point. So if you go too close to it, you're going to rotate very, very quickly. Just move a long way away for finer action. And again, yes, you can hold shift. So that's fine. And the scale tool S works in the same way. You're dragging in relation to the center. So don't start near. Start a long way away for better control and hold shift to keep proportions. Make sure you drag diagonally away. If you otherwise it's going to lock to only vertical or only horizontal movement. Dragging diagonally, which can be a little tricky sometimes, is the uh, is the way in which you can uh, adjust the size. Let's undo. Adjust the size. There we go. As a uniform width and height change at the same time. If you were to click, simply click with the rotate or scale tools, you will reset the center point, which is useful if you want to scale around a particular point that's not the center of the object or to rotate around some something that's not the center of the object. But just be careful because it is going to reset your center point. If this bothers you, just stay with the main selection tool and use this instead, at which point you'll be rotating around the center more often than not.